anything that quells the spirit much more than one of these suburban parlors. They are extremely apt to have stuffed birds in glass cases standing about on small tables. And if there is one thing which gives the man of sensibility that sinking feeling, it is the cold accusing eye of a ptarmigan or whatever it may be that has had its interior organs removed and sawdust substituted. There were three of these cases in the parlour of Wisteria Lodge, so that wherever you looked you were sure to connect. I heard the door open and turning found myself confronted by something which, since it could hardly be the girl, I took to be the aunt. Oh, what ho, I said. Good morning. I don't think you'd better see my niece just yet. She is just having a nap, she said. Oh, well, in that case... Seems a pity to wake her, doesn't it? She said. Oh, absolutely. When you get the influenza, you don't sleep at night, and then if you doze off in the morning, well, it seems a pity to wake someone, doesn't it? Miss Platter's influenza? That's what we think it is, but of course you'll be able to say. But we needn't waste time. Since you are here, you can be taking a look at my knee. Your knee? I'm all for knees at their proper time, and as you might say, in their proper place. But somehow this didn't seem the moment. What do you think of that knee? she asked, lifting the seven veils. Well, of course, one has to be polite. <laughs> Terrific. You wouldn't believe how it hurts me sometimes. Really? A sort of shooting pain. It comes and goes, and I'll tell you a funny thing. Oh, what's that? Lately, I have been having the same pain just here, at the end of my spine. You don't mean it. Oh, I do. Like red-hot needles. I wish you'd have a look at it. At your spine? Yes. Now, nobody's fonder of a bit of fun than myself, and I'm all for the human camaraderie and making a party go and all that. But there is a line, and we Worcesters know when to draw it. It can't be done, I said austerely. Not spines. Knees, yes. Spines, no, I said. Well, you are a funny sort of doctor, I must say. Doctor? Did you think I was a doctor? Aren't you a doctor? <laughs> no, not a doctor. I don't think I've ever heard a woman laugh so heartily. But if you aren't the doctor, who are you? Was just the name I came to see Miss Platt. What about? Oh, somehow I couldn't make it. You know how it is. Oh, just came to see her, you know. My uncle heard she was seedy, don't you know, and asked me to look in and make inquiries, I said. Your uncle? Oh, yes, Lord Yaxley. Oh, so you are Lord Yaxley's nephew. That's right. I suppose he's always popping in and out here, what? Oh, no, I've never met him. Rhoda talks a lot about him, of course. But for some reason, she has never so much as asked him to look in for a cup of tea. I began to see that this Rhoda knew her business. If I had been a girl with someone wanting to marry me, and knew that there was an exhibit like this aunt hanging around the home, hard a girl beyond a doubt, but not the sort of thing you wanted to spring on Romeo before the time was ripe. Of course, nothing is definitely settled yet, she said. You didn't mean that, I thought. Oh no, she's thinking it over. I see. Of course, a title is a title. Yes, there's that. Who do you think about it yourself? Oh, it doesn't matter what I think, she said. There is no doing anything with these girls these days, is there? Uh, not much, I said. I'll be tooling off then. Well, if you must. I think I'd better. Well, all right then. Pip, pip. Toodaloo, I said, and out into the fresh air.